Hi, and welcome to lesson 14, Entanglement Revisited. Here we will talk a little bit more in depth about bipartite entanglement. We will also talk about multipartite entanglement, so entanglement shared between more than two parties. And then we will conclude with um, some applications of entanglement in quantum networks. Step one, bipartite entanglement. So the, one of the main jobs of quantum network is to distribute entanglement. So let's start by considering a concrete example where we have the following networks, where these circles represent quantum nodes and these dashed lines represent physical links uh, between uh, uh, certain uh, nodes of the network. And let's say that these uh, green nodes are trying to engage in a quantum communication. So they would like to establish an entangled pair uh, between themselves. So we're going to label them N1 and N2. And we saw in previous lessons that how this works in a quantum network is at first we have to establish link level entanglement, so entanglement between um, uh, neighboring networks that are connected directly by, via a physical link. And then we can use entanglement swapping and the intermediate uh, uh, nodes in order to end up with an uh, entangled connection between N1 and N2. And we also talked about that the network has to consider things like routing and multiplexing in order to be uh, satisfied the need for quantum communication between multiple uh, uh, users of the quantum network. So, but one question which we have not addressed in detail is how do we evaluate the quality of the established uh, entanglement. After all, we saw that the quality directly impacts some of the protocols. So, we saw that in entanglement-based QKD, the quality of the entanglement that's shared between Alice and Bob directly impacts uh, the key that they're trying to uh, uh, establish. Namely, if the entanglement is not perfect, if they don't share a pure maximally entangled state, then the key that they are going to end up with after at the end of the protocol will also be only partially correlated. More crucially, the uh, uh, quality of the entanglement also uh, tells us something about the security of the entire protocol. If they are not sharing a maximally entangled state, there is some chance that their state, uh, their qubit is correlated with some uh, qubit that Alice has in her possession which means that Clever Alice can find some information about the secret key that Alice and Bob are trying to establish. So in this, uh, in this scenario, we see that better quality of entangled states lead to stronger security uh, during, establishing, uh, during the establishment of a secret key. So what are the different methods of uh, evaluating the quality of the distributed entanglement when we talk about bipartite entanglement? We saw that fidelity is one function that we can use to talk about the quality of a, a, a state uh, at, at the output, either of a quantum communication task or a quantum computation task. Here we have some reference state, which is a pure state that describes our ideal uh, state that we are aiming to get. That's our desired state. But due to noise, uh, usually what we have is, is some mixed state. And if the noise doesn't have much effect, if it's very weak noise, this state will be close in some sense to the ideal state, our reference state psi. And we can evaluate how close we are using the fidelity, which I remind you is uh, computed in the following way. We have the fidelity f between the actual state rho and our ideal state psi, given simply as this in a product. In the context of quantum networks, generally we are trying to establish bipartite entanglement between end-to-end -end nodes. So we are mainly interested in the following expression, and that's the fidelity of the state that uh, uh, and, uh, two nodes are sharing and the ideal state that they wish to share, which is uh, a ent maximally entangled state. In this case, we will uh, consider the phi plus state. And let's compute some examples. So let's say that we have the ideal case, meaning there is no noise, there's no eavesdroppers, and the actual state that uh, the two parties are sharing is really the pure state phi plus, here written as a density matrix. Well, we can just simply substitute that into our expression for the fidelity, and we see that what we get is 
the square of the inner product between phi plus and phi plus, which of course uh, we have seen many times is one because the state is normal normalized. So good, we get fidelity of one, meaning we have the ideal state. Now, what if we um, end up with an orthogonal state? So maybe something has gone wrong um, and due to some noise, uh, Pauli Z uh, matrix was applied to our ideal state. And the two parties end up with the following state. It's still a pure state, but it's not the desired state. So in this case, it's phi minus. If we substitute that into our expression for the fidelity, we will see that fidelity drops to zero. And that's because uh, our state that uh, the two parties are sharing is orthogonal with the desired state phi plus. But here's the problem. We care that the two states, that the two parties, Alice and Bob, are entangled. And here, they are clearly entangled. They manage to share entanglement. It's not their desired entanglement, it's not the desired Bell state phi plus, but it's still an entangled state nonetheless. But if we just simply evaluate the fidelity, we get a zero, meaning that uh, our state is no good. And that's not quite what we're looking for. So we see that fidelity in this scenario is not a very good measure. So, what can we do? Well, we saw previously in the entanglement-based QKD protocol that we can test quantum correlations by violating the CHSH inequality. To remind you, we have uh, uh, considered the CHSH inequality and the state uh, psi plus, which we used in the E91 protocol. And there Alice measured in two different bases, given by these uh, vertical and horizontal lines in the exit uh, plane of the block sphere. So A1 corresponds to measurement of the Pauli Z observable, A2 corresponds to the measurement of the Pauli X observable. And Bob measures in these rotated bases B1 and B2 given by these following expressions. So B1 is given by Z minus X, whereas B2 is given by Z plus X. And Alice and Bob, they have to repeat this process many times, perform these measurements, build up statistics, so that they can compute their expectation values for uh, the following uh, measurement settings, where Alice measures in A1 and Bob measures in B1, Alice measures in A1, but Bob measures in B2, and so on. And together we can form this following expression known as the CHSH uh, expression. And if this is larger than two, then we can conclude that the state that Alice and Bob are sharing is really, in fact, entangled. So, okay, that seems to work. Let's try and use uh, the CHSH inequality for our state phi plus that we are trying to verify. Well, we can again consider the same measurements and we construct the same CHSH expression. If you go through the calculation for the expectation values, you can quickly find out that the expectation value for A1, B1, uh, for A is equal to A1, B2, and also A2, B2, and it's given by 1 over square root of 2. And the expectation value for A to B1 is negative 1 over square root of 2. So we can substitute all these values back into our expression for the CHSH expression. So here we have 1 over square root of 2, plus 1 over square root of 2, and we have here we have minus 1 over square root of 2, because we are substituting this expression, and then minus 1 over square root of 2. So we get that s is equal to 0, and we said that in order to certify that this, the state is truly entangled, it has to be larger than 2. But phi plus is clearly entangled, so what went wrong? Well, the answer is actually very simple. And it's the fact that this inequality has been constructed specifically for the state psi plus. But now we are trying to use it on the state phi plus. So, in order to use CHSH inequality as a test for entanglement, we need to fix our uh, current expression for S. Luckily, in this case, it's very simple. All we have to do is just swap these uh, signs, this negative, si negative sign with a plus sign over here. And with this new expression, we can actually find out that truly s is equal to 2 root 2, 
which is the maximum violation of CHSH inequality, which always has to be true if they are sharing maximally entangled state. So we saw here that CHSH inequality can detect bipartite entanglement. And to remind you, if we go through the CHSH test and we obtain the value S larger than two, then we have an entangled state rho. If S is equal to two root two, then we can say that the state that the Alice and Bob are sharing is maximally entangled. And if the value of S is less or equal to two, then the test is inconclusive. Now notice that I have not said that the test does means that the state is separable. And that's because there are some entangled states which do not violate this inequality. However, if we find violation, then we can uh, automatically conclude that the state is entangled. And also we have to be mindful of what a CHSH expression we are using. Make sure that it's the correct one. Make sure that you are using the right combination of those four expectation values with the correct plus or minus signs, depending on which state you are trying to test. Is it phi plus, phi minus, psi plus or psi minus?